You know, there are two kinds of migrants. There are people who move from, let's say, rural areas to urban areas and they settle in urban areas. But then there are people who move from place to place. They go from the rural area to a city, do their work and come back to the rural areas. These are seasonal migrants or circular migrants. And essentially, over the last two decades, the numbers and proportion of such migrants has been, go been going up quite significantly. Most of the vulnerable migrants are these short-term migrants. The seas. Of course, there are people who have been displaced from rural areas. They are also very vulnerable and distressed. But apart from them, these short-term migrants, seasonal migrants, uh, are the ones, those who still have a foothold in the rural areas, uh, they are the ones who are really poor and vulnerable and they are the ones who need policy attention. Broadly, I would say the single most important um, uh, challenge is the challenge of acquiring identity, acquiring civic identity. Those who migrate for uh, seasonal migrants and other similar migrants find it very difficult to acquire a civic identity in the places of uh, destination. Now linked to the fact the second biggest problem is housing and shelter and in general finding uh, social protection you know so they are getting their entitlements as citizens uh, in the area to which they move or even the, in the area from which they move. Uh, this is their most difficult set of problems. I think uh, the first question which has to be tack tackled is how do migrants acquire an identity which is portable? And this is also then linked with the fact that entitlements must generally be portable, whether it's uh, entitlements of their children to education, their entitlements to health, food security. There must be a core set of entitlements which must be portable across origin and destination. There are two kinds of legal protection. One is legal protection at work. Uh, there are some laws concerning legal protection. There is a law which is exclusively for migrants, interstate migrants, which is the Interstate Migrant Workers Act. And then there are other laws for the workplace, the Contract Workers Act, Minimum Wages Act and so on, which apply to workers in the unorganized sector or informal workers generally. Now, in general, the law which is exclusively for migrants hardly works. And the other laws are also very poorly implemented. And there are issues both with the kind of changes that, that can be made in these laws and how the, if the implementation of these laws can be made more effective with respect to migrant workers. My study was to look at the social protection floor in a, in a particular state in Odisha which is one of the poorest states in India. The social protection floor, as you know, considers a set of entitlements, guaranteed entitlements, uh, using a life cycle approach for citizens in a country. Uh, the level of these entitlements is dictated by national considerations. And what my study did was to show that providing a core set of entitlements was feasible, uh, financially feasible, as well as administratively feasible. Further, we looked at the kind of challenges which an effective social floor a protection floor would require for vulnerable groups, in particular migrant workers. Both the centre and the state have to chip in in order to ensure better social protection for the poor and the vulnerable in the state context. As far as, as, far as the state level is concerned, uh, we need an amalgam of both appropriate, in fact this is also true at the national level, appropriate social protection policies and programs. Uh, in India, you know, if you look at the states, the experience is very varied. Uh, many states in this country have marched ahead, have been able to provide much more effective social protection than other states. Uh, so the, my general argument based on the work that I am currently doing on the state of Odisha uh, is that it is possible to have a more effective social protection floor even at the state level. But of course, both the centre and the states have to chip in.